Hi everyone, I'm Laura and welcome back to Book Bubbler. <sighs> well, it's been a week. It seems really long in a lot of ways and in other ways I feel like I was just filming a Friday Reads. So, kind of an odd week. Um, not bad, just odd. Every day felt very different from the next, so that's alright. I just got home from work a little while ago, hence my super awesome polo shirt. I know, you're jealous. Um, <clears throat> and my hair is still wet because I had it up in this little like clippy thing all day. So that's nice. I smell like my shampoo. Okay, so I finished four books this week. Uh, before that, I have the song of the week. I have two songs this week, actually. So the first one is one that I heard on the radio on Monday on the way into work, and it refuses to leave my brain. It's making me crazy. I don't dislike the song. It's absolutely fine, but I would like it to leave my consciousness just for like an hour would be a nice reprieve. And that is Want to Want Me by Jason Derulo. I found the link ahead of time to make sure that it was up and that the video is there. And it's a little steamy, just so you know. If you're not into that kind of thing, maybe don't watch. Um, it's not, it's not like bad, but you know, it's not um, skipping through a forest of, you know, and looking for mushrooms and things. It's not that. It's, um, th there's some naked peoples and some lingerie and stuff. So, you know, be forewarned. Um, but the other one I'm going to link to is the one that has popped up the most in my iTunes shuffle when I have been dancing by myself of an evening, like I do probably at least three or four nights a week. And that would be Purple Rain by Prince. I'm not mad at it popping up a lot. I really am not. But it came up twice in one night and then it came up like the third song the second night in a row and I thought this is kind of weird and then it showed up it was the last thing I heard the, the night after that I was like oh, okay okay <laughs> so I will link to that too um the video that's on YouTube that I'm going to link to is just the album cover I and mean, it's like the long version of Purple Rain it's like eight and a half minutes or whatever so just a heads up on that one too and you know lines are doing their thing on my face so Let's get to books, shall we? Um, like I said, I finished four this week. Only one is physical, so I'll save that one for last. It'll be terribly exciting. Uh, so first up is An Easy Death by Charlene Harris. This is the first in the Gunny Rose series. I will be reading the second in the series as a buddy read with Ange from Ange with an E next month. Hey girl. Um, she's already read this, so I had to read this to catch up. And I liked it. Um, I thought there would be more paranormal things in it. I thought there would be maybe like a vampire thrown in or, I don't know. I, I don't know. I just thought it would be something different than it actually was. And it's absolutely fine. But I, after I was halfway through, I was like, yeah, this is not going to be <laughs> maybe what you were expecting. It's okay. So this one follows Lizbeth. Um, she is a gunny color gunny rose I forget why that is I don't there is a reason um but she is about 19 years old and she is in an alternate America after the Great Depression I think it's FDR was assassinated it was one of the Roosevelt's um and the country the United States is now split into this is super distracting hold on a little better. I'll be redder and whiter. Oh well. Not a weird light anymore. Okay. So the states are split up um, into different countries. So there is the whole west coast of America is um, the new Holy Russian Empire and uh, Sarah Alexei who is the young child who has hemophilia. He is still alive. He's an adult married. None of the Tsar's Zar, arena and the children, none of them were murdered. They all escaped. Uh, so he has, Alexei's heading up the west coast of America. Then there is Texoma, which is between Mexico and roughly like Oklahoma border, like that kind of chunk in the southwest. And Dixie is the southern United States. The east coast of the states is New... 
Britannia. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> you knew it would come to me. New Britannia and like the northern states, like uh, in Wisconsin, I would be in Canada now, which quite frankly, I would welcome at this point in time. Anyway, so that's how the U.S. is set up. So what Lizbeth, our main character, does is escort people from Texas or Texoma into Dixie or Canada or wherever they need to go. There are lots of roving bands of bad guys that will shoot you out and like rape you and kill you if you're a woman or just straight up kill you if you're a guy. They will turn over your car if they can and strip it for parts and it's like there's crazy there's just like crazy bandits. So at the beginning of the book, Lizbeth is with her crew of I believe four other people, three or four other people helping a few families trying to get across the border to Canada and things go ass over tea kettle and everyone gets murdered on her crew except for her and about half of the passengers get killed as well. So she survives and helps get them. It's brutal, but she gets them after a few days of walking to where they need to go, where they're supposed to be originally. She gets back home somehow and um, these two Russians appear in town, their little town, looking for someone to help escort them across into Mexico. They're trying to find a certain person. So she meets with them and agrees to escort them to Mexico. They are called Gregories because they are witches, but they're witches after Rasputin. Uh, Gregory Rasputin was the one who quote unquote saved Tsarevich Alexei's life. So all the people that learn his magic system are called Gregories. So two of these Gregories are, you know, hire Lizbeth to take them across and Anything that can go wrong will go wrong. Neither party is honest with the other party. There are constant assassination attempts on two or three or one of them. Or, I mean, it's really crazy nonstop action until they get to Mexico. Then they get there and even more stuff hits the fan. They think they're still being tracked. Like, one of them dies. It's a lot. <laughs> so, it's entertaining. For sure, absolutely. And her writing, I mean, it's just so easy to read. It's really a welcome change of pace to just fall into a story and be taken out of real life for a bit. Um, so I'm going to give this a three. Like two and a half to three, if I'm honest. Like I said, I liked it. It was just fine. Uh, I'm more curious to see what's going to happen in this second book now. Because I really don't know. I really don't know what's, I, I can't even imagine what's going to be coming up for a storyline. So, An Easy Death, three stars. Next up is Hammered by Kevin Hearn. This is the third in the Iron Druid series, which is urban fantasy. And like the first two books in the series, it's plot-tastic. <laughs> it's just lots and lots of action. This one is a little different, though, in that, um, I mean, it's still just crazy action for most of the time but there is a little almost pause eye of the storm if you will about halfway through the book and that helps the end of the book and the usual plot tasticness of it really seem um less noticeable and you're just like cycling through and who's going to come out alive and everything else so Atticus out the last druid <sighs> He is in Asgard, um, he's trying to steal a golden apple for Lakshmi, who is a witch, an Indian witch, wizard. Not sure what she is exactly, uh, but she occupied someone else's body in the second book. And for killing a bunch of Bacchants, who are people who were follow the Roman god Bacchus, um, for killing them, she wanted a golden apple from this tree in Asgard. So... Atticus goes, he's preparing for some other something coming up. We don't know which exactly yet. He gets it and comes back to give it to Lakshmi. and Oh, Laksha, excuse me, Laksha. And then you find out that the big plot of the story in this one is that um, Leif Erikson, who is one of his lawyers, he's a vampire lawyer, Gunner, who is a werewolf, a friend of his, and a few other 
gods, minor gods, um, that he hasn't met quite yet. They all want to kill Thor, god of thunder. So Atticus <laughs> gave his word that he would take them all through the tree of life, up the roots, through the system, and get them to the plains of, I forget what it is, it's all Norse mythology, and um, they're going to have a big showdown and try to murder Thor. <laughs> it's crazy. It's crazy. It's a lot. I mean, I'm a little familiar with the major gods of Norse mythology. I'm barely familiar with the Eddas. I mean, I know of them a little bit. There's a lot here that takes place in Iceland in the past, which is interesting. I think Iceland's very fascinating for some reason. I'm just interested in it. Um, and the battle itself is just absolutely crazy. Um, and I'll leave it there. It's a, it's a lot. It's a lot. But I really enjoyed this one. I'm giving it four stars. And I'm surprised at myself. I thought it would be another three, which they're just fine. They're interesting, you know. It's not a big thing, but this one was different and there was more story here and more heart to it. And the results of this big battle with all these people trying to kill Thor spring off into something very new. And it ends on a cliffhanger, not like a big teen drama cliffhanger, but it ends with you not knowing where Atticus is going next. I mean, clearly Atticus lives because he is the main character in the whole series. So that's not really a spoiler to say that he survives since he's the person. He's the last druid. But, um, yeah. Looking forward to number four. I think I should get it pretty soon from an ebook. So that was really good. Okay. And number three is an in-between book in the Iron Druid series. Between three, which I just finished and just talked about, and then the next one. So the three and a half is called A Test of Metal. That stars Granuil, who is... And I'm sure I'm butchering that name. I apologize. She is the apprentice that um, the Atticus finds for himself. It's a 13-year, I believe, 13-year program to learn to be a druid. She is maybe a year in. So it's one event that happens to her while Atticus is gone in Asgard, fighting with all the gods and everybody else. So it's something that happens to her on Earth. So that was interesting. I liked that. We checked in with her. We checked in with Oberon, too. She's taking care of his dog. That was good. Three stars, you know, just fine. But nice to see her on her own a little bit doing something. And then the fourth book is a graphic novel called Spectacle. This is book one by Megan Rose Gedris. Gedris? Gedris? Gedris. <sighs> okay, this is set in a circus, which I'm not into circus stuff at all. I don't know why I picked this up. I was just browsing in the graphic novel section. I thought, okay, I mean, but I, I really enjoyed this one. So there we have twins, the main characters. There's Kat and Anna. They are, uh, Kat is a sword thrower, or knife thrower, excuse me. And Anna, she tells fortunes. She uses tarot and tells fortunes, but she believes in statistics more. So she builds her own difference engine based on Ada Lovelace's design and it, she uses it herself to help predict how things will go in the next town if people have questions. It takes a while for the engine to work but that's what she likes to use as the difference engine. So she might you know look up answers ahead of time before they head into a town and she can apply them to people. I don't know. So these are the two main characters we have. We have everyone in the circus itself of course and it opens with the train, the engine not working, and they're stuck with hardly any water in this dry desert area. And just before they get everything moving again, Anna comes in at night to go to bed and trips over her dead sister's body. Someone murdered her. All of her knives are thrown on her back. So Anna's distraught, doesn't know what to do, and then Kat is a ghost suddenly, and Anna can see her. So Kat is sort of helping to solve her own murder, I'm trying to help Anna out too. No one can see her, can see the ghost cat, but Anna can. And Anna is trying to logistically go through and figure out who murdered her sister. Um, suspects and using her engine to, you know, she thinks she knows who did it. One of the clowns might have done it. So she runs it through and it's a low percentage. She said, well, she still could have done it. It's just a low percentage. And you're never quite sure who has, who's back. And she's got, I think she's, 
the fat lady befriends her. She's also um, can talk to snakes that are attracted to her. So she tries to help her the most. And I really hope that she is not a bad person and that she really does want to help Anna. Um, but yeah, there's a huge cast of characters. I really enjoyed the art style. And I liked how obvious it was when, you know, once she's a ghost. Like, obviously, that's ghosty. Um, just a little bit bloody, but not bad. Yeah. And I also liked that when uh, Anna is having a nightmare, these girls were, I don't know if they were abandoned. They haven't quite said about their parentage, but they were on their own from a young age. They escaped. And... When they're having nightmares, it's all in black and white. So I liked that part of it too. It was really clear what, you know, who was who, what was happening. Um, there is book two and three out. I think that's the end of the series. So I'll be getting book two and three, hopefully shortly. But I really enjoyed this. It was unusual. I liked the mystery. I liked all the characters involved. And despite the fact that it was a circus, I liked the setting too. Like, I'm surprised. So four stars recommended. And that's it for this week. I waffled out a lot. Wow, sorry. It'll be a longer Friday reads. I apologize. Um, coming up this week, I am just trying to finish <laughs> stuff I've started as usual. Of course, almost all my library books I held up a couple of weeks ago, they're almost all back and gone. White Rage, I got like a page and a half in and I had to go back. Some of my libraries in my system have reverted to their own individual due dates for books. Generally speaking, unless it's a new item, all materials are three weeks, a three week checkout. And for some reason, some libraries just decided to make it like 10 days. Which, why would they do that, first of all? And second of all, unless you're watching your account, how would you know? Because you would, it's not, it's not, White Rage is not a brand new book. It was out four years ago. So, yeah, I started reading it and looked and I was like, oh, it was due yesterday. Bizarre. And found some other stuff that was then almost overdue. So um, I I want to keep reading social justice books, but there is such a massive hold list for everything in my county, which is wonderful. I'm absolutely happy, but I want to read stuff now. <laughs> so I'm going to have to start buying them, which again, I'm happy to support, you know, authors and causes and it's important stuff but I want to see what I might want to potentially own and not just read whatever sounds good. Um, I have a copy of The Warmth of Other Suns by Jeanette Wilkerson on its way to me now. I've wanted that one for quite a few years so I, that one was fine. I was happy to buy that. So I'll start that one once it arrives but if any of you guys have read anything in particular that you really recommend I read that you think is worth potentially keeping please leave me a comment below. I would like to get some Ibram X. Kendi stuff, and I would like to get um, another one by um, Henry Louis Gates Jr. I like his stuff anyways, so I'm not sure which one of his to get, but if there's anything you really, really recommended, like four stars, let me know. I will say I really did not terribly enjoy, and I feel bad saying this, Ta-Nehisi Coates's, I read it earlier this year. It's the smaller book, hardcover white with black writing on it. I'm sure I'll put a picture up here. That one was fine, but I'm not sure I like his writing style. So maybe not him. I don't know. If you, Let me know what you recommend. I will investigate everything. Um, yeah, that's kind of it. This past Sunday, Danny at Spinelli Speaks, hey girl, she came down and I Helped her do her wedding invitations, get those stuffed and labeled, and it would have been much smoother if my printer wasn't such a fart, but it is. So <laughs> whatever, we got it done. It was nice to see her and um, chat for a bit and see like a human being. Um, but yeah, otherwise it's just been working and reading and I'm kind of falling back into reading again, which is really, really nice. I'm looking forward to it continuing. I better continue. Please, please continue. I got to get through some of this stuff. So how are you guys doing? Have you read any of these books? You know, what's going on? Let me know how you are. Um, I hope everyone's staying happy and healthy and um, everyone in your family is too. And I um, hope you guys are having really good days. So I will talk to you guys soon in the next one.